chairing this meeting. This meeting will be filmed by Western Media Center. Is there anyone else in the audience who should record this meeting? And if there, if there are, could you please identify yourself so the audience is aware? All right, seeing none. As a reminder, tiny reminder, please turn off your cell phone ringers and uh, sign any other devices you might have. The format of the meeting will be as follows. <coughs> the applicant will present, the board's peer review consultants will provide comments to the board, the board members will have brief comments and questions, and then the hearing will be open to the public for questions and comments. The meeting will be civil and all people will be treated respectfully. When the board is ready for public comment, <coughs> people will be asked to line up at the podium to use a microphone and state your name and address the record. Everyone will be given an opportunity to speak, but in the interest of time and fairness, repetitive or off-topic comments may be cut short. Um, thank you all for attending tonight. This is the first planning board public hearing to review the special permit application for the Islington Village Redevelopment Project. This is the next part in a series of steps that may lead to the exchange of property between the developer and the town to facilitate this potential redevelopment. While the Board of Selectmen is authorized to find this application, final decisions have not yet been made on the form of the project or the exchange of town assets. <coughs> the Board of Selectmen will continue to negotiate on land disposition agreement while the Planning Board considers aspects of the proposed redevelopment plans. The Planning Board will meet on this application tonight and will likely continue this hearing to more meetings prior to a vote on the application. The Planning Board will consider many dis disparate, different aspects of the plan, including pedestrian, bicycle and vehicular circulation, traffic and parking demand, architectural and site design, landscaping, buffering, and public amenities, neighborhood compatibility, and the provision of the proposed development. The zoning bylaw requires the Planning Board vote to approve or deny this application by July 15, 2018. 180 days after the opening hearing. Approval of this application will require a minimum of four supporting votes from the board. <coughs> if the planning board approves this application and the board of selectmen and the applicant complete a land disposition agreement, then the articles will be brought forth at an upcoming town meeting for residents to vote on the property exchange. A two thirds majority of voters will be required to permit the project to go forward in the form approved by the planning board. Depending on the final design of the project, there may also be zoning amendments which would require a town meeting vote. Thank you again for your participation in this process and for attending this meeting. Additionally, the Eastern Center Task Force will be holding meetings monthly, and the next one being on February 7th, to review the application and make a recommendation to the planning board. So please feel free to attend these meetings as well if you have questions and comments that must be heard. So with that, and I hope that helps the audience understand exactly what is going on here <coughs> generally and uh, for the next several months. And with that, I'd like to turn over to, to our applicant to hear their presentation. Sure, yes, we'll do that. Well, we, Thank you, Peter. <laughs> it's not that in front of me, but... All right. All right. So this... <coughs> I'd like to form open the, uh, the hearing. Now this is the 266-278, 277A, 277-283, 288, 280, 291, 295 Washington Street, 9 School Street, 9 School Street, and East Street, Islington Village Redevelopment Public Hearing for the FMUMD Special Permit. It's also an Earth Mature Movement, EIDR. This is a proposal for a new mixed-use building for a first floor commercial with two floors of 18 condominium residences and underground parking at 28 Washington. A renovated building for retail and chapter uses at 266-278 Washington. Re the relocation and renovation of branch library to 277-283 Washington. A new retail pharmacy, the CVS likely, building at 9 School Street. The renovation of Blue Park Tavern for office and one residential unit. Parking, landscaping, and associated site improvements. And now, I will turn it over to the applicant. Good evening. For the record, my name is Peter Zacher. I'm an attorney with the Office of 12 School Street in Dedham. I represent the Trues Yellow Properties LLC, the applicant before you. Uh, also here tonight is Giorgio Trusiello, uh, one of the members managers uh, of the applicant. Uh, next to him is uh, Mike McKay from McKay Architects, who's the project architect. We have Mike Carter and Sue Harrington from GCG Associates, who are the project engineers. 
Uh, we also have representatives on behalf of CVS here tonight, uh, Don Karen and Brian Dundon. Uh, just to get the procedural stuff out of the way, uh, on for the record, on December 13th of 2017, an applicant, application was submitted for special permits and other relief required for the redevelopment of various properties in Islington Center at the intersection of East Street, School Street, and Washington Street. Uh, the project involves, on the East Street side, demolition of what I'll call the existing church, uh, relocating Wentworth Hall, construction of a new mixed-use building with approximately 13,000 square feet of commercial space on the first floor and 18 two-bedroom condominium units on the upper floors. Renovation of the existing 266 to 278 Washington Street, which currently houses CVS and the dry cleaners, including conversion of about 4,000 square feet of the basement space for relocation and use by the MMO daycare. On the School Street side, it's proposed to demolish the buildings at 291 Washington Street, that's the building with the coffee shop and the barber shop, Demolish 9 School Street, which is the building that was formerly used as the tailor shop. And to demolish 277A Washington Street, which is an adjacent residential building. In its place, it's proposed to construct a new CVS with approximately 13,000 square feet uh, and a 1,700 square foot mezzanine. Relocate the municipal parking lot with the same number of parking spaces as are currently located, located in the current uh, municipal parking lot. Relocation of Wentworth Hall and renovation and relocation of the former Blue Hot Tavern. Again, for the record, the planning board did cause public notice of tonight's meeting to be advertised in the Westwood Press on December 29, 2017 in January 5th, 2018, and caused notice to be mailed to the statutory abutters. Application was forwarded to Better Group and other town consultants for peer review and distributed to other town agencies, boards, departments, employees uh, for their review and comment. Tonight we believe we have a great project to present and we think we have a great story to tell. The story starts with the applicant, Petruziello Properties. And I apologize for those of you who have heard this, but I want this for this record on this hearing and for those who haven't been here or who haven't watched this uh, at home. It's important to note that Petruziello Properties is not a faceless, mega out-of-state developer. It's a family-owned entity and operated business. It's actually Antonio and Giorgio Petruziello, father and son, local. They both currently live in debt. They've been in the development business for many years. They're experienced. They've built single family homes, complete subdivisions, and numerous commercial and mixed use buildings. The actual applicant tonight, Petruziello Properties LLC, develops, owns, and manages property. To be clear, Petruziello property does not redevelop a property and flip it to some third party. Instead, they retain and manage the properties personally. Antonio and Giorgio are hands-on managers. And as I stated, they're local. Therefore, you know who you're dealing with today, and you'll know who you're dealing with well into the future. And as I said, they're experienced. They currently own, operate, and manage over 150,000 square feet of commercial space and over 175 apartments, many of which are located in mixed-use buildings. Most of the properties have been constructed or renovated by Supreme Development Inc., a construction company owned by Antonio and Giorgio Petruziello. They have earned a very positive reputation in the communities where they own and manage property. First and foremost, they take great pride in the appearance of their buildings. They always maintain their buildings, and they're always looking for ways in which to improve them. They've also earned the reputation of being willing to work and cooperate with communities in producing what has been promised. 
We believe that was demonstrated with the recent project at 301, 323 Washington Street. We fully understand the town and the neighborhood have a vested interest in making this project the best possible. So does it the applicant. He's a major stakeholder in the improvements to and vitality of Islington Center. The story, I should say, the project actually started back in December 2014 when the Petruziellos purchased all of the properties in Islington formerly owned by Magaletta. Except for a few cans of yellow paint, these properties had been, had been neglected for years. And as best they could be called unsightly, which probably had nothing positive to do with surrounding property values. As stated, the Petruziellos take great pride in the appearance and condition of their properties. So there was never any doubt that they would undertake major improvements and updating of their Islington properties. But they did not move forward in a vacuum. Even before the actual purchase of the Magaletta properties, my client had many meetings with town officials and staff, as well as with a focus group, to get an understanding of the town's vision for Islington Center. From these meetings, my client came away with an understanding that the town, through its comprehensive or master plan, identified building and site design improvements to Islington Center as a major goal as we're providing new and diversified housing options, more convenient shopping experiences, and of course, improved building appearances. This led to the project at 301, 323 Washington Street. And yes, there were concerns and apprehensions during that permitting process, but I trust we can all agree that the results are extremely positive and as promised. And at the very least, there has been a major aesthetic improvement over the yellow painted buildings that used to be at that site. That mixed use building contained 12 apartments. Some real concerns were expressed over the potential tenants. Today, nine out of the 12 apartments are leased and six or seven of those tenants have Westwood connections. We have a town employee, we have several apartments rented to people who work at, at Severian, and to date, there are no school children. As promised during the, prom during the permitting process, my client, as he does with all his properties, has a very rigorous tenant application review process. The project and application that are before you this evening is in response to the request for proposal for redevelopment of Islington Center issued, issued by the Islington Task Force back in May 2016. The RFP was designed to encourage redevelopment of the area, including certain town-owned parcels, in a manner which was consistent with the town's objectives and to maximize the town's benefit. However, the RFP offered a unique opportunity for both my client and the town. Instead of simply reacting to a proposal from my client, it provided the town with the developer's vision of what could be Islington. And it provided the developer with the town's vision of what could be Islington Center. Simply stated, it was a unique opportunity for both sides to work together to determine what should be and hopefully will be Islington Center. And it was not necessarily a very quick process. My client submitted the RFP in June 2000, response in 2016 in the year and a half since then, there have been countless meetings with the Islington Task Force, I believe it was 14 meetings, if I'll stay corrected on that, as well as other town boards and staff. And there have been countless revisions to the project that is now before you. The revisions we believe that have been responsive to the comments and others which were required to maintain the viability of the project. As stated, my client has earned the reputation for listening and being responsive to constructive comments. They have done so with the project before you. My client heard that many liked the look of the church, that it was Islington Center. So the mixed use building has been designed to replicate the same. My client heard that many preferred condominiums to apartments. So the 28 apartments in the mixed use building that were originally proposed 
have now been replaced with 18 condominium units. My client heard that the proposed CVS should be designed appropriately. So our architect worked with CVS and the proposed new CVS has been designed with the village concept in mind. And my client heard that the proposed CVS drive through was not desired by the community. So again, working with CVS, the drive through has been eliminated from the project. And there are additional changes that have been made since the submission in both response to staff comments as well as initial peer review comments, and the engineer and architect will review those. In the end, the project before you remains economically viable to my client while providing extensive benefits and we believe minimal negative impacts to the surrounding area in town. Some of those yeah. bless you. Thank you. Some of those benefits include, we believe, satisfying the goal of the RFP and master plan in revitalization of Islington Center as a business and community center. Petruziello Properties firmly believes that CVS is the cornerstone to the economic vitality of the area and a major convenience to the surrounding community. And while CVS has a lease at their, at their current location, the project assure, ensures that CVS will remain in Islington Center for many, many years in the future and in a building which is more efficient. The project continues and enhances the village look of Islington Center. As stated earlier, the church building is being replicated. The CVS has been specifically designed for this project, and other buildings are being appropriately modernized. In addition, there will be much improved landscaping and streetscapes. The area will be more pedestrian and senior friendly. We provided an additional buffer to, uh, to the back of School Street property with additional community space. The project does provide more housing opportunities and choices. In this case, condominiums and a town center. In addition, the project will increase the availability of affordable housing in the area. The project includes the historic preservation and restoration of the Blue Hot Tavern, a, a project, a portion of the project that has come at considerable cost, estimated at approximately $800,000 from when the building was moved to when it will be completed uh, at, as part of this project. The project provides an opportunity for the MMO daycare center to remain in Islington Center. The project will result in substantial increase in tax revenues to the town. Our fiscal consultant, Fugia Planning and Development, estimates that the project will result in a net positive fiscal benefit of over $500,000 annually to the town. Currently, the Petruziello properties, including the house at 277A Washington Street, generate approximately $75,000 annually to the town. And the $500,000, as I say, is a net after accounting for co all costs, town costs, as well as the potential for three school-aged children to live in the condominium. We fully understand that that part of the project, as well as all parts of the project, uh, will be peer reviewed by the town's consultant. We also believe that the project results in better and more efficient parking in the area, including maintaining the existing number of parking spaces in the municipal lot. And finally, we believe the project represents an opportunity for the better utilization of town funds. No applicant, we surely won't indicate how the town should spend their money. However, the town did commission a study of the existing church, which according to that study, in the first year would require an expenditure of $1.2 million to address immediate needs. Other architects have looked at and say the $1.2 million expenditure could, if ADA issues arise, skyrocket well beyond that. At the end of the day, after spending 1.2 million, you have a nice church building. It's still a church building. We believe the money, or a portion of that money, would be better spent relocating the library to the other side of the street and enhancing with new community space, combined with the developer's offer of $1.725 million 
we believe you'll end up with more usable and more efficient community space. At this time, uh, with permission, I'd like to have somebody from the engineering team come up and they'll walk you through the components of the project. Thank you. Good evening. My name is uh, Mike Carter from GCG Associates. What I'll do is I'll do a, a broad overview uh, of the project um, and some of the some of the details, but I won't go into all the little details so everybody can get a general understanding. So up on the screen up here, what we have is um, basically Washington Street runs up and down, School Street's here, East Street's here. Um, there's eight parcels associated with this, as uh, indicated earlier. Roughly the total area is three and a half acres, um, of which uh, four of those parcels are owned by the town. If you're looking at the screen, it's the brown parcels that are owned by the town. This right here is located where the uh, town parking lot is. Over here is the uh, community center. Here is the library. And then the fourth parcel is a little rectangle right out here near East Street. The blue color is owned by the applicant or under agreement by the applicant. Uh, basically, there is an existing house located back here. Um, this is uh, the barbershop on the corner. This is the tavern right here. And this is the other building right adjacent to the tavern. Over here is the CVS. Um, so those are the those are the it's basically four parcels for the town, four for the um, applicant. Um, what we're proposing to do is um, well, first before I go that route, what I'll do is I'll just kind of go over the existing site. Most of you probably are very familiar with it, but this is the um, School Street side, and I will reference School Street and East Street side just to kind of help everybody work today. The School Street side, basically, we have three curb cuts on that. Two on Washington Street. One is for the town parking lot right here. The second curb cut is here for this barber shop and this building on the corner. And then there's a wide curb cut, basically the entire length of School Street for the tavern in the existing building. That's one of the features there. The, the other feature is that there is a 43 existing parking spots in this location when they're all combined, of which 30 of those parking spots are part of the town parking lot. Um, some of those parking spots are spoken for other businesses up to the town's 30 spots. Um, the next sheet is going to be the East Street side, which consists of obviously the CDS, which is located right here, Washington Street, East Street, the community building, the daycare, and then the town library is sandwiched right in here with the back parking lot in here, and these are the residents that live behind the, this parcel. Um, that, that parcel has a total of 55 existing parking spots. It has two entrances to the parking area, one being off of East Street right here, and the second one is down by the side of CVS. Um, and I bring this up because in, when I go to the proposed plan, I think there's some improvements that we've done that would be very helpful to traffic flow and traffic patterns in this project. Seeing forward, so as indicated earlier, basically the only building on this side that is going to remain, the structure itself, physical will remain, the facade and the interior will be redone, uh, the existing library will be torn down, and the existing uh, community center slash daycare area. Well, the, the existing library will be torn down on this local side, but you'll see it'll come back when we go to the proposed plan. Um, okay. okay, so. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Could you just clarify the library? process a little bit. Yeah, okay. The so library will not be demolished, correct? The library, well, there will be, if, if approved, okay, if approved, the existing library will be, the building will be taken down, a new building will be built across the street. No, we're oh, moving the building? This is not a test. It's, your, right. it's your project. That, that's my, that's my <laughs> I'm not aware of some of that construction. Let there be no confusion. The okay. library is not going to be okay. demolished. I, I apologize. Um, so here's the, here's the existing library moving across the street. Here's Washington Street, School Street. The CVS building is located here. And um, what we will have is we will have one entrance off of Washington Street. If I indicated earlier, right now there's two curb cuts. And one of the curb cuts is, if you're, from, you're all familiar with it, is very close to School Street and that whole intersection. Not easy to come out and do a left or right. Um, probably not advisable to do a left from there. 
so with the entrance would be off of Washington Street to in and out we come into a parking area um, part of it would be assigned for the school for the uh, town parking lot there would be 30 spaces in there for the town reserved for the town and the balance of the spaces would be for the development and the tavern um, and basically under the proposed condition there would be 86 spaces um, increased and 30 of those would remain with the, the library or the town parking lot. Also of note is that if you look on Washington Street, we are adding seven, seven spaces for parallel parking. Um, the town clock, that's the right terminology, will be moved. Uh, basically, it's, it's approximately right here. It would be moved down to here in front of the library. Um, there would be, as indicated, no drive through for CVS. Um, this would be a one-way exit only out on the school street, um, which would um, improve traffic pattern. Basically, you would come in here and you could either exit out off Washington Street or this street. Um, uh, included in all this, there's, there's lighting plant, there's lighting on the site, there's landscaping, there's storm water. I won't go into all the particular things about that, but in general, the storm water, the net, there will be no net increase leaving the site when everything is done and built because there is an increase in the previous area on the site. Um, up to note, when we're done, basically the town would own the, the library and the final layout of the parking lot that included the 30 spaces would be deeded back to the town. The second piece of interest on this is there's a, a small resource area, back, Wetlands resource area back here, intermittent stream. Um, this parcel back here, as I'm outlining, would be deeded to the town as open space, would remain green, is green today. Um, the tavern would be located under our current design back in this location. One of the comments from our original plan was that um, I believe the library was both, had one of the provisions for a 2,000 square foot addition. Um, that is located, if you see this second rectangle in the back of the building, um, that would be the potential for a future addition. Um, that's something that the comment that came back um, since we submitted and we wanted to make, the, make you aware of that. That's the overview for this. Um, with respect to fire trucks, turning lanes and access, um, we provided a plan that shows that a fire truck or a, um, a, a delivery truck, a tractor trailer truck can go in there and enter and access. The other side of the street, um, Washington Street being on the top of this, top up here, East Street here, um, we would use the existing entrances that are there today. Basically, CVS is right now is located here. This is the existing driveway that would remain. It would be a 24-foot wide entrance. And then the existing entrance off of um, East Street would remain. That would be how you would access the back of the site. Up on the street, if you see right in here, there's existing, there's six parking spaces out on the street. We would increase that to 12, so we're adding six spaces for parallel parking out on the street under this proposed design. Uh, this building right here is actually the CDS building. It will, the actual shape of the building will remain. There will be, obviously, it will be renovated both interior and on the exterior, which we can talk about in a few minutes. This would be the, this building right here would be the proposed 18 condos. Um, the parking for the condos, if you were to look at the plans, is located under the building. There's 36 spaces under the building for the condominiums, basically two, two parking spaces for each unit. Um, you see this white area out here? This would be um, patio areas. They would be used probably for retail. Right now, um, it's, it's just kind of laid out as a patio. It could be tables and places for people to sit outside. Um, yet to be determined what's, what the use is. Um, there are 90, let me make sure this right, 96 parking spots on this side. Existing was 55, um, so there is an increase in parking. Um, there is some waivers that we've asked for relief on uh, parking, which we can go into later if necessary. Um, drainage, basically, there, the amount of impervious area on the site isn't changing. We're not increasing it, so it's pretty much all paved right now. Um, so we're not going to be any increase in stormwater leaving the site. Lighting on the site would be in the parking areas and as adequate. Um, landscaping, there's a significant amount of landscaping and lighting shown on the plans. Um, as the plan evolves, that's going to evolve um, once we decide 
but the final building locations and everything are based upon comments from various town officials and people. So this scenario that you're looking at right here is one of the concerns was was there emergency access for fire trucks, ambulances, and also another important thing is CVS has a tractor trailer that comes in and makes deliveries. Um, if you look closely at this plan, you'll see these these lines right here. It kind of what it does is demonstrates the turning radiuses for a. Actually, if you look on your plane, you'll see this is the fire truck for the Denim, I'm sorry, Westwood um, Fire Department. Its purpose is to demonstrate that they can make, enter the site, access it, and then exit this way um, as necessary. And that was a comment that we was asked for since we submitted the plans. Landscaping plan, um, if you, just real briefly, there's, uh, as you can see, there's plantings, and if you looked at all the green space on the original plans, that was um, the area where all this landscaping will be done. With the intent here is to match the lands, the street view that was on the other side done by the applicant, you know, with the same kind of sidewalks, curbing, trees, lighting, so it all looks very similar. Again, right here, this is, the, this is just another demonstration that if a fire truck or a delivery truck or who had to come into the site, you can see that again, they outline that there is access in and out of the site uh, for emergency vehicles, fire, fire trucks in particular. Um, in general, that's, that's the overall picture of the site. There's some other things that we've looked at, but what I'll do is I'll turn it over to the architect to discuss the uh, building structure. Good evening, Michael McKay, I'm the uh, project architect. Um, nice to see everybody again. Um, we've uh, as with the site, we've uh, received some comments from uh, both peer review and staff, and we've tried to respond to some of them. And one of the things we've done is organized the, um, the different buildings into building A, B, and C, just to simplify things. Um, so we're starting with the CVS, which would be at the, uh, uh, the school street side. Um, so this is a rendering which we've uh, we've uh, seen before, and uh, as, as mentioned, CVS has allowed us to design this to, um, to uh, fit in with uh, the village feel that we've, uh, that we've tried to replicate on, or trying to replicate, as we did on the, uh, the previous project. Um, so these are the four elevations of, uh, and these are new drawings, so these are, uh, we had not presented in the um, submission. Uh, so these are four, uh, four elevations. Uh, the top one is the Washington Street elevation. Uh, quite a bit of glazing with uh, entrances on both corners. On the School Street side, the, um, the left side would be, um, that's actually false windows. That, those would be spandrel glass, but we're trying to um, simulate the, the glazing on the, uh, uh, the true glazing. We're replicating planters on both sides of the elevation. The scale of the building is 29 foot 6 on the Washington Street side, and School Street goes down to 24 foot 6. So the, the elevation here is 24 foot 6. This is, again, the all four elevations, uh, the parking lot elevation on the lower side, on the lower, and the uh, rear elevation, which is 
the delivery elevation, which is, um, um, again, that spandrel glass, those would be uh, false, uh, uh, false windows. The next building is, sorry, I've got too many things. This would be building B, which is the mixed use building. Um, again, this rendering was prepared for um, task force meetings. It is, uh, as Peter mentioned, that it's a replication of the, uh, of the church. Um, instead of converting the church, which would, it's just not feasible, um, we would be replicating it with retail on the first floor and 18 two-bedroom condominiums above. The uh, parking, as mentioned, it would be in the lower level accessed from the lower garage, as everybody knows from that site. Um, Washington Street is um, approximately eight feet higher than the lower level, so we're able to get this garage tucked in under the building. Um, there would be a drive access here, and we've also responded to some comments about the parking being a little bit tight. We've, we've changed it. We have not lost any spaces. Uh, and they comply with all of uh, Westwood regulations. This area would be the residential lobby, which is um, kind of at a split level. It's not quite at the lower point, but it's not at the same level as the um, as Washington Street. So there'd be a, a stairway and an elevator that would provide uh, handicap access. And we have multiple bike storage areas, both exterior and interior. This would be interior bike storage and exterior uh, in that lower level. We also responded to a comment about trash, and this building will have internal trash with uh, both recycling and uh, conventional, um, and some tenant storage in the bar, bio storage, homeless storage. This is the lower garage, though. The um, Washington Street is uh, 13,000 square feet of retail, which on the left side, or the East Street side, would have a, uh, a covered area that would replicate the, um, the pillars of the church. And we're also the uh, patio, as was shown in the um, uh, landscape plan, uh, would be on this side, and we also have a patio on this side. There's a little bit of variation in the elevations and the plan. We, in terms of doors, we're, we're still developing the number of tenants. We're showing five right now, but it could be as few as three and as many as seven, the way that this is, this space is divided. The columns are somewhat realistic. We know we need columns, but they're, they can be moved around. The um, second floor would have 10 two-bedroom condominiums. They uh, they vary in size from 1,100 square feet up to uh, 1,400 square feet. So they would be two bedrooms, two baths. They would be at a much, uh, higher level finish than, say, an apartment would be, um, and you know, the amenities that would be provided different from an apartment, such as laundry, and uh, in each unit would have its own laundry. The upper level, which is the front portion of it on Washington Street, is actually all dead space, but for the most part, this is going to be in the eave as the roof line. We're not putting any dormers in the front, so it's a, uh, the roof, um, is covering the space, so we would have mechanical equipment inside that space and, um, and potentially some storage as the plans develop. And this, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, seven uh, condominiums here. So the elevations, this is the uh, Washington Street elevation. So the, the right side of it, again, we tried to replicate the church, um, it's not exactly the same. Obviously the retail on the first floor with the awnings is, is, uh, is a different look. And it's also slightly shorter. There's a dotted line that says outline of the building. We're approximately four, four and a half feet lower from the ridge to our proposed. We would be at 35 feet, which is the same height as um, 321 Washington Street, the building across the street at the same ridge height. But this one from Washington will appear lower because there'll be, there's no dormers in the front. So the, whereas the building across the street had dormers, this will not have any dormers. And we will do our best to, as the project develops, we will replicate the, uh, the spire and, and detail it uh, so it will be a, an exact 
This is the uh, rear elevation, um, and it's difficult. It doesn't really appear this way. As there's all kinds of variations in the plan. It's not a straight, flat front. This portion of it extends out, and this is the garage entrance here. And as I mentioned, there's different grade changes. Um, all handicap accessible, but there is some, uh, this would be the residential entrance off of the parking lot. And here we have some dormers that you'll see that are, um, that are those upper units. Um, this is the, again, the, the, the covered area. So it's East Street elevation, which the portion that's darker here is the portion that, that extends out. The lighter part is back 60, 70 feet. So the portion that would be most visible from East Street or from the corner uh, is, uh, is shown again. It's uh, doing our best to replicate that, the church building. And this is a drawing that we were asked to put together um, by Bader. Um, was to show the two buildings together. Uh, we'll get into the MMO uh, retail building next, but taking the, the new mixed use building and the renovated uh, CDS building. And this is a direct scale uh, view of that, an exact scale view of that. Building C is the renovation, and this is something, again, we presented at the uh, task force meeting. It hasn't changed. Um, we would be uh, renovating uh, both interior and exterior. It's a pretty much a gut renovation. This whole upper level, this is all false. On this side, there is a second floor to the, um, to the laundry, and that would, be, that would remain, and we, what we tried to do is balance the design um, with this false roof. This will be no occupied space in any of this area. And I have uh, plans. So this is Washington here. Um, this large piece is the uh, would be the MMO. We provide access here. And on the site plans, there's an area about 600 square feet that's not shown on this drawing, but on the site plan, that would be the playground um, for the MMO. This would be an entrance. There's a handicap access as an elevator to provide access upstairs, both upstairs and into the MMO as the, the grade is, uh, it's a slight but three feet down below the grade at this point. So that's again 4,000 square feet in the back would be, or well, the Washington Street end of it would be mechanical space. The upper level is, uh, so this is the laundry, the dry cleaner, I'm sorry. So this, this is the CVS, but all this is gutted out, and it would be uh, approximately 8,700 square feet of retail uh, in total. The uh, elevation rendering shows it, but this calls out material types. This back, or this false gable, actually is at 34 feet. Again, we, we studied that. Uh, trying to provide balance. We didn't want symmetry. We, we, we looked at not replicating this piece exactly. We had this uh, this as kind of the anchor or the entrance. Um, so it's more of a design decision on our part. But um, again, these are all false dormants here. The um, side elevation and the, um, both the right and the, the left side elevations. This is the driveway uh, going up that currently exists, so it would be uh, you know, providing windows, and this would be a brick base, a brick foundation to the uh, entire building. This has a mixture of materials, as all three do, of shingles and um, clapboard siding. Um, the other, this would be the right side elevation, and then potentially these could be doors that would open up to the patio. That's, um, there's a patio in between the two buildings, and that is a, a possible, uh, a dual location as the plans develop. And this is the rear from the parking lot. So again, where the basement is here, it's about three feet or two and a half feet below the actual entrance elevation. If you remember, there's all kinds of handicap ramping going up into CVS. We would be eliminating that, providing access through this entrance location, and there would be an elevator that provides um, handicap access or. Uh, just access to the entire building. 
So the back elevation is uh, similar to the front, but we, we have windows for the MMO space, so these transom windows, and then retail windows. Some of them may be transom glass, but um, uh, the hope is that uh, most of them will be uh, see-through windows. That's it. Um, I just wanted to go back to the site plan for a second. Okay. I just wanted to uh, get Washington Street here. This is the renovated um, building where the MMO would go. This is the, an entrance structure that would be built, provide uh, kind of a split entry that would provide access both up and down, and this is the playground. Um, and it's approximately the same size as the playground that exists, and both patios were here and here. Um, I think that's a quick overview. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I just want to clarify uh, two points. Uh, one is yes, and again, we'll reemphasize the uh, assumption is that the library is being picked up as is, moved over uh, across the street. Uh, one of the concerns that was raised during a lot of the uh, prior uh, discussion of this project is that, uh, who's the word concern, yeah, is that the town and the developer not get into a condominium situation. So I want to emphasize anything that is ultimately owned by the town and has designed uh, the library uh, on the school street side uh, with a uh, room in the back for a 4,000 square foot addition. I believe it has a 2,000 square foot basement. Is the basement 2,000 square foot? So at the end of the day, uh, the town would fully own, not condominiumize, it own outright. Uh, that building, uh, the space for the addition, and the 30 parking spaces uh, which are outlined uh, for the uh, replication of the municipal uh, parking lot. Uh, and just one other point about uh, CVS, uh, we've been not shy in saying that CVS is very important, if not integral, if not primary uh, um, economics uh, part of the project uh, from my client's perspective. Uh, and uh, CVS, currently in its location, no surprise to probably anybody here, does a pretty good business. Uh, so to encourage them to uh, participate in this project and move across the street, uh, the incentive is a, a new building uh, that works better for them uh, operationally. Um, over the years, uh, CVS has uh, changed uh, in terms of, of their operations. Uh, this new building is designed uh, to meet those, those operational uh, needs for the project, and again, I want to indicate that, uh, I guess I've been surprised a lot, I was surprised initially when they let Mike, uh, our architect, uh, work with them in terms of the design. I was pleasantly surprised uh, when uh, they agreed later in the project uh, to the elimination of the uh, drive-through, uh, as well as the, um, I use the word entrance on School Street uh, being an exit only. Uh, so CVS has been uh, very cooperative uh, in the project in terms of responding. Uh, they've looked at everything that has been asked of them to look at. Uh, some things they clearly have uh, rejected because they just didn't work for them operationally or otherwise. Uh, having said that, that's our presentation uh, for this evening. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you guys very much. Um, I'd like to uh, hear um, from our consult group, um, the town consult group, and some commentary. Um, we're making a play to have this open to public comment by 8 o'clock. Um, so if you can keep that in mind as you speak, because we also want to hear a briefing from the board. It's, it's, 7, it's like 727 or so right now. So if you could take two minutes. <laughs> if you could take... <laughs> Nessie, 
He's a registered landscape architect with DSK. And uh, Greg Lucas, uh, he is a professional engineer and a professional traffic operations engineer with Baker. So as, uh, as was mentioned, this is our first uh, get, uh, time to review the project. Um, most of my comments are uh, requesting additional information. A lot of the, the decisions that we've, we've got to work through together with the engineer. Um, and so uh, I'll keep my, my points brief. There's a number of issues. And there's a number of technical things that we, we don't necessarily have to go through at this point. Um, so the project uh, assumes uh, a couple of things, that uh, two of the lots, uh, 9 School Street and uh, 277A Washington Street, will become part of the uh, flexible multiple use overlay <coughs> FM UOB. Um, and also that the retail space um, proposed by CBS will be allowed. Um, having said that, the uh, there's, a, a, there's several, you know, this is the first chance to comment. Uh, there's, there's several um, additional items that need to be addressed. So the, the we would expect uh, a grading plan to be provided, erosion control plan, uh, a small water pollution prevention plan uh, as part of uh, the urban yeah. movements and also a storm water management uh, review. The uh, project meets uh, the minimum requirements for, for most of the, uh, for the uh, area and lot, project area and lot area. Um, the building height was mentioned, uh, although being reduced, still exceeds the uh, allowed uh, height in that, in that district. And therefore will require the right waiver. Um, the number of parking also does not uh, as a mixed use, uh, will need to be evaluated whether uh, the, the number of spaces are there adequate for uh, the proposed uses. Uh, as a multiple use facility, you know, there's times when uh, some uses are, are hot, some, some are not, uh, and, and so we'll have to evaluate that more closely. Uh, one of the issues with the parking is going to be um, how do we make sure that the the, 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 use, uh, the parking lot can, parking can be shared. For instance, is the is underground parking going to be designated for uh, residents only or also to be used for the um, uh, you know, retail space? The, um, so, um, <coughs> So the project also includes uh, re reconstruction of the municipal lot. The municipal lot has uh, uh, restrictions or, or I want to say credit for other lots. Uh, parking space is reserved for other, for other lots. Uh, primarily uh, the Wild Blossom uh, on 301 Washington Street and the uh, Birdie's Creative Creamer. Uh, so we would make sure that, that those are, are, are preserved uh, through this process. Um, one of the, the issues we would like to see is, is a possible relocation of the proposed dumpster. Oh, it has our, it's already been moved. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we haven't been privy to the, to the revised set of plans, but there was a dumpster right here. Um, so I guess this can be parking spaces. Um, uh, the, also, the idea of adding more bike racks. I know there was a uh, bike rack for CVS. Uh, no, there were bike racks proposed uh, interior of the plan, but we would add add more bike racks for the retail use and the CVS. Um, there is a limited uh, buffer zone along this edge and along uh, the back edge of the uh, uh, Blue Hill Tavern that uh, we would expect to have a more robust kind of uh, screening, um, evergreen or indoor fence combination. 
we, we requested an auto turns, but I just saw it on the screen. It looks like we'll have to review that uh, for emergency truck access. Um, there was no signage plan provided. Uh, we'll have to review that when it comes in. Um, and then the, so then there's three particular waivers that the, after the, uh, the project requires. Um, one is the building height, as has been, has been discussed. Uh, and then a determination whether the parking uh, is sufficient to meet the, the development needs. And then the, the, the buffer zone uh, is in the, in the zoning requirements. There's a 20 foot buffer between uh, FMUOB and residential uh, uh, districts. So that will also have to be discussed. Um, as well as uh, the, the proponent is, is requesting that uh, they provide one affordable unit affordable unit when three are proposed or required. Uh, and I think that's got to be worked through to uh, see what alternatives there are for that. Um, as part of the stormwater, um, the project, uh, as, as was discussed, the project areas are primarily, particularly on the East Street side, almost all impervious. Um, it, is, it is likely that the stormwater runoff from from these lots exceed uh, the capacity of the street system. Uh, it's been operating that for years, but there's, there's been a systematic uh, approach to upgrading uh, sites when we can to meet both the uh, water quality issues and capacity issues. So we will be looking at uh, providing additional um, ways to, to meet that, uh, primarily through administration and parking. Um, and if, if the 301 building is any indication uh, that the area around here is pretty sandy, so that might be uh, pretty easy. So utility services, um, we would expect that uh, the, the, the revised plan to provide all the new, new utility services, including size and all the information required for that. Um, and a couple other things in this list. Uh, site lighting, uh, lights were shown, but no photometric or details associated with the lighting. So that will have to be worked out. As well as um, what, what the hours of operation and, and what the uh, a night lighting situation would be, uh, particularly behind, uh, in, in the re you know, adjacent to the residential area. And then um, we did also do a little research uh, relative to the uh, municipal lot. The municipal lot used to be, uh, some years back, uh, a gas station. And so there's got to be some um, precautions taken as, as we do work on that lot, as we propose, you know, whether it's stormwater facilities or, or dewatering operations. Um, and uh, so we just recognize that at the end of our life. And now I'd like to pass it on to Mike. Talk about the building. Thank you, Bill. For the record, I'm Mike Sinesi. I work for DSK Architects. Uh, and I'm a peer review architect uh, with Beta on behalf of the town. Uh, thank you to my colleagues, uh, Mike. Uh, nice to see the additional renderings along, uh, uh, along uh, uh, Washington Street. We wanted to see the, uh, what was the church building, now uh, the mixed use building, adjacent with the uh, existing CVS building. We wanted to see them together uh, and understand how that influenced the streetscape itself. Um, there are some, uh, I'll speak about some minor technical points on the drawings, uh, and then, but mostly uh, architectural design. Uh, by the way, for the record, I'm not a landscape architect, I'm a registered design architect. Um, uh, some of the drawings need to be renumbered for clarity. Um, we'd like to make sure that the drawings include slopes, mechanical ventilation, drainage and bollards, and any turning radii that would be required. 
some of the uh, windows are not, we understand that the drums are conceptual in nature. Uh, so that not, not all the windows or openings are shown in the plans, but uh, that's certainly helpful to understand the relationship of scale uh, and where there are uh, daylight openings on sides of buildings versus solid walls on buildings. So that would be very helpful as well. Um, uh, on some of the elevations, the, the heights were not shown, so we've asked for that as well. Well, the, the most significant uh, uh, el architectural element that we're looking for uh, on, the, uh, on the building design is, uh, well, uh, while we're at uh, C CBS here, um, the, I'm not sure if the entrance here, we're not sure about how the relationship of this rendered building relates to the, uh, to the plan as shown on the, uh, on the site plan, and I'm sorry if I'm going in the wrong direction. <coughs> um, if we take a look at this uh, this elevation here, there's no clear understanding necessarily. I, I suspect that the entrance to this building is, is right underneath this port cocher entry here. Uh, it's not necessarily clear to us. Okay, so Mike, I, I think I, I think we can all accept that there's some deviation between the current drawings and the renderings that were prepared probably six or eight months ago. So okay. maybe we won't worry too much about that tonight. Well, back to the chase here. Um, the, the most significant element that we'd like to see perhaps some some redesign on or so some look at is on the rear of the uh, what is the existing CBS building. Uh, uh, this this piece right here, which is shown as a large wide gable. Uh, on the elevations, I won't go to that, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, it isn't like a pediment, an architectural pediment. Uh, it doesn't know whether it's wall or pediment, so we would ask the uh, applicant to look at that. We'll also get some comments here from uh, landscaping <coughs> to speak to. Um, they're mostly technical comments about uh, spacing for like for trees and uh, uh, and perhaps considering other alternative uh, plant types uh, that might be. Uh, more hardy and uh, prone to, uh, to better life livelihood. Uh, I won't get into all these technical details though. It's all listed out here. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, for the record, my name is Greg Lucas. I'm with, <coughs> excuse me, uh, with Beta Group and led the uh, traffic review uh, for the for the project. The there was a traffic memorandum issued with the application that we had a chance to review and provide some comments on. And and the majority of those are asking for more detail and um, how the traffic data was generated and how the specific uses relate to um, traffic increases and specifically at the the changes in use in the driveways and how those will uh, how those will operate. Um, just to briefly go through some of those issues, uh, existing traffic counts for the study were taken in 2015. We'd like to see newer data collected, which would um, part of that is to capture the redevelopment of 301, 323 Washington Street, uh, to capture what changes have happened there, and get current data for the intersection. Um, it's at the heart of it. Sometimes. In addition to that, we'd want to see existing driveway counts. They've estimated some of what kind of traffic is generated by the uses there today. Existing counts would help um, clarify that. And along that, same, along that same line, when determining what kind of traffic will be generated by these uses, what kind of traffic changes will exist, how that breaks down for the particular site driveways, and in turn, how those um, site driveway intersections with Washington Street, East Street, and School Street um, will operate. In addition to that, we'd expect to see some uh, site distance evaluation of those driveways to make sure that there's safe um, visibility entering and exiting, um, specifically where changes in, uh, changes in driveway locations, like on the uh, School Street side, changes in driveway locations, uh, buildings close to the driveways, how those impact uh, site distance. And so that's just a very brief overview of the traffic comments. Yeah. Uh, we'll turn it back to work. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I guess I'll, um, 
I'd like to now just open up to the board for uh, uh, some brief comments and, and questions. Before we really dive too deep into the weeds, I want to thank uh, allow this next to be more about hearing from the larger people we've assembled. So, do I have a volunteer? Steve. <laughs> you know, we seem to be on the stop. Uh, my, my first concern is the Blue Hot tab. The plan uh, originally approved by the Islington Task Force was to have a group hot tavern on Washington Street right next to the relocated library. Uh, and their plan showed tucked away in the back. I, this is a historic building. I don't think we should just stick it in the, in the rear and, and back there uh, where people can't see it and so we can forget about it. Should be up front right there uh, on Washington Street. Now I note that I um, just received this tonight. They do present an option A, which uh, shows the Blue Hot Tavern located next to the library on Washington Street. Um, so I briefly have looked at that, and that seems to be a good plan. Uh, I don't know if we have uh, a slide of that to show everyone. So they, it's best to always provide them 
here, so you know they're going to happen and they're not going to be. So okay, you know, find it somewhere else if you can. And that's always the problem. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I concur with Steve on the uh, traffic issue in the left turn lane. We'd like to get in there, uh, Washington Street, turn on the East Street. I also have a comment about the the exit coming out from behind CVS onto School Street, which I think might be a little trouble with School Street backing up at the light. Uh, I think we really need to study that traffic-wise see if that's feasible. Uh, last thing I'd like to add is the, it's always bothered me, the orientation of the church on the lot, the way it faces the fire station. I think if we could reorient that, if we're gonna tear the building down and rebuild, if we could just reorientate that to face the village itself, as opposed to Cockeye across the street towards the fire station. Just been a pet peeve of mine for a lot of years. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple additional comments on top of Steve's. Um, uh, I have a long list of things here. Um, but just a, a couple things. I, I'd like to just make sure you think about um, providing adequate infrastructure for the future electric vehicles that are probably coming to, into our lives. I know that that causes issues outside of your site in terms of power capacity, but to at least make sure we're sort of addressing that. Um, another hot item that's been coming out of a lot of projects is internal storage in these buildings for deliveries. I do see some tenant storage in the basement, so maybe that's something you've already been thinking about. Um, Steve mentioned the intersection adjustment, which is something we've been, we've been talking about for quite a while, so some backup as to why that hasn't been dealt with. Um, I would say also, there's also a bus stop, I think, on the School Street side, or the CBS side, I guess. And I guess I'm curious to know if that is still there and how that's being managed with the, uh, with the T. Um, and I would encourage the board to support me in not granting the waiver of the architectural model. I think that's something that I know is being arctic as a drag at times to put together. But I think in terms of buy-in and public understanding of the project, um, given how monumental this is, it'd be something that would help the process along quite a bit. And we're gonna discuss that for tonight in terms of when that might appear. But uh, I think that would help um, us all understand the master plan a lot better. I just think a lot of members of the public understand it as well. Along with probably more of a, maybe a composite site plan of the prior project, um, the fire station showed a little more context and kind of understand how this thing all fits together, because I think it's been the other well, but it's a little hard to read kind of bits and pieces on the screen. So with that, we'll pass the mic. Thanks. Well, I, uh, I'll be the fourth one to say I'd like to see that uh, traffic improvements to the left hand lane. And um, a couple of things that I like the idea of the model, um, because it was very helpful to see the um, additional elevation up there that showed the on the East Street side, uh, both buildings next to each other. I think it would be very helpful to see a three-dimensional version of the whole thing, because it, that looked very different from what I was imagining. Um, I also want to emphasize with the affordable housing units, we, we need those three units. Um, it's the requirement, and um, I know that we, whenever we're adding housing units, we need to make sure that we continue to always add the affordable units that are required. Um, the Hart Tavern, I agree with Steve, uh, I'd like to see that moved up to the front, not hidden in the back. And I'm, I'm also just curious if there would be some way to maybe, uh, without affecting the historical appearance too much, couldn't you build off of that building? Like, it's a very small building. It's not large enough to actually function as a, as a restaurant or a tavern, but maybe it could be attached to something else and you could actually have a, um, a functioning tavern there in Islington. I think that's something that would be of great interest in the neighborhood is to have a, something like that, some kind of um, restaurant tavern uh, in the area. And so why not try to find some way to take that old building and, and build it into something like that. Um, let's see, the uh, couple other things. The buffer at the back on the, on the East Street side again, between the parking lot and the um, <coughs> 
the residential area. I agree that that's it would look like a, there's maybe five feet or something. I don't think there's enough of a, of a landscaping buffer to be along there. I think that's um, we'd like to look at something that could provide an additional buffer there. And um, just looking at the CDS building, if you can go to the um, the new CDS building, I think that this is a huge improvement over, um, for example, what's uh, I mean the actual rendering of it. <coughs> so I, I think that this is a huge improvement over, um, the, over a standard kind of CDS building. Uh, but I am a little overwhelmed by these the large triangles in the design of things. Like so here we have uh, on the left part of that building is kind of what I think of as the village, and then we have, it may just be that it's, you know, closer perspective and all, but I think it's across the street as well, there are these really large triangles, uh, which are sort of non-functional space behind them, and I just, uh, I, I don't I just find that to be a little um, big, and it kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't get overwhelms me visually, as well as the large, uh, entranceway there, it kind of, it just uh, is a little bigger than I would like to see. Uh, so that's, that's all my comments, so I'll pass it to Brian. Uh, thank you for the presentations tonight. Um, I just have a few questions to, to add from, uh, from the board. Uh, one is when I, when I look at the, the rendering with the, the steeple and the, essentially the church on the corner, um, it seems like a very long, dense building. So, for me, the the look and feel of a New England uh, New England steeple and church in the in the center of town sort of falls away. I was driving through Medfield today, even looking at the Islington Center uh, today. It seems a very pretty long and tall. So, I don't know if anything can be done to the designs to uh, to break it so at different spacings to, to add to those elements. Again, the, uh, the buffering would be interested to see what improvements in those buffers from the neighbors so that they don't feel a negative impact of this project. Um, also, with the, the parking is less than I would expect to see in order to have successful businesses. Like everybody in the town would like to see successful businesses so we don't see a, uh, a churn or, uh, or businesses struggling with that. And uh, to add to point come the exit on from CVS onto School Street uh, to take a left at that point where you're crossing traffic um, and trying to queue into um, probably already a line of cars at the light I think is going to be a bit of a challenge so when that traffic report is updated I'd really like to see some, uh, some details about that just to make sure that uh, we have success there. Uh, and then the, the other item is with the MMO, so it, it, it will be in the current existing CVS. So in relationship to the, just the dry cleaner in that same building. And so I'd just like to know a little bit more details about where is that going to be set um, from where uh, the kids are going to be um, in there. Um, and then also the outdoor playground, it seems like the, that it's a, the area is surrounded by parking spots on three sides, so um, I'm wondering if there's a better spot for that. Currently, it's, it's set up against the building. Um, and just, you said that it it probably matches the area, but I'd like to just get some information on what is the current area um, when you feel it used by that. That's all for now. I just want to have, I just have a couple of quick final comments. Um, and actually, Brian brought something to mind about the MMO. And I guess I, I'll ask you guys, actually, to answer just quickly, how, how much square footage is dedicated to the MMO? Is it 4,000? 4,000? OK. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just leave it at that for now, because the comment about the playground made me think of something, which I'll, I'll leave off the table for now. Um, I have one other comment, and that was, all right, I'm sure we'll come to you as soon as it, as soon as it opens up the public comment. So, are there any other final comments to the board? All right, going once. Um, okay.
we're going to open this up to some public comment if there are no other comments from the applicant right now. Um, what I'd like anyone to do, please, is I suspect we'll have a quite a few people offering comments. Um, if you could probably queue up um, at the podium, um, be sure to state your name um, and your address for the record, and uh, try to keep your comments brief and to the point. Um, and uh, in fairness, everyone, if, if a, a comment has been made either by us already or by others in the audience, if we could move on to new information as quickly as possible, that would be great. Um, keep in mind that this, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is not the final meeting. There will be many more meetings. Meetings of the Center Task Force. This will come before, this presumably before a town vote, before final approval what happens. So this is just the beginning of the process. So keep that in mind. So the floor is yours. Disagree. I actually just wanted to put in a to say I like it tucked back like that. I, I feel that that 
were at all in, in front like that is kind of what Mr. Gorman said about how the building is so long. I rather like the empty space between the CBS and the library and that took it back. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Lynch, 56 Parker Street. Um, my question is really to the developers, and it has to do with the CBS. Um, where is the voting? Where is the voting bed? On the side. So that the, the huge tractor trailers are going to come in and move around through this parking lot, and they come onto the side. And it's loaded from the side. Okay. Hi, Misha Jackman. I live at 263 Washington Street, so I'm like right behind the Northeast Security System. And now you're talking about putting a community center, so my house is like tucked right back there. And then with the blue tavern, you're talking about putting back there. I'm just wondering the buffer, the lights, we have a pool, um, how do you that you digging up back there? In addition to the house, it's right across, it was by, it was Sam Cohen was the original owner. It's like turned into a dumping ground. There's like big black bags that men are dumping, so I get to wake up every day and look at that. So I just wanted to see what you're gonna do about that. Just on that Sam Cohen piece, he yeah. still owns it. We oh, don't have, does. we only have it under agreement right now. He's still the owner. Okay, so do you know what the trash We will not, we, what was that? The trash that's piled up. Uh, I will email him to, tomorrow and make okay. sure he cleans it up. Okay. Yeah, I think on, on these comments, I'm sure it'll be more about the, about the buffer zones and having some type of the properties. Again, that kind of composite site plan with some color just so we can kind of read more legibly like what's going on in the big picture would probably go a long way back to Go ahead. Hi, my name is Fran Fusco and I live at 20 Pine Lane. And my question is, um, the loading zone or the loading docks where CDS is, is that coming um, from Washington Street to the back and out onto School Street? Is that where the exit is? Okay. Um, is there going to be put in any kind of uh, weight limitation or size of trucking? Hopefully that they're not going up School Street and cutting down Pine Lane, which is all very residential. Um, right now, Pine Lane is like a freeway at certain times of the day. And it's a very windy road. Um, the town um, fire department specifically uses it to get to the other side of town. and. Um, We've had quite a few traffic um, accidents, if you know how it's very windy in certain parts. So I'd be a little concerned about the uh, trucking, truckers cutting through the neighborhood, um, whatever hours, I'm sure it's pretty early hours in the morning. And the other thing is, um, at 7 o'clock in the morning, at my house at 20 Pine Lane, it is like a I mean, the congestion is ridiculous from 7 o'clock on uh, because of the light on Washington Street. So I really have a um, big concern about that as well. Just want to add quickly on that topic because um, I know the, the topic of how this parking lot interacts with uh, School Street and ultimately Pine Street is a is going to be touched on many, many times. And that's a current problem that exists today, regardless of what Giorgio does in this project. And it's a problem that existed before we added the current apartments that are there. So I don't want everyone to feel like this this project is a catalyst for that issue. But if the refined traffic study that Phil has requested and further analysis on how the traffic works could start to explain a little bit why that problem is there. Is it the traffic light? Is it just volume, you know, sort of what is it, so we could maybe use this project as a little bit of a mechanism to try to alleviate that. Um, I think everyone in the room would support that, along with the police and uh, fire department. So.
Good evening. Now the bill is out with H for Batesio, 32 Webster Street. Um, I first want to start off because I commend Mr. Olinoff and Mr. Adkins for raising the, and sharing your concerns about the affordable housing issue. And I don't know why that's squeaking. Um, and my most pressing question that if you would indulge me is directed to each member of this planning board. I'm interested um, if you attended the most recent Board of Selectmen public hearing that took place on Monday, January 8th. If you would indulge me. I, I watched it on TV. I didn't attend it, but I did watch the, uh, with regards to affordable housing. Yes. Yeah. No comment? No. no. I'm aware of the discussion. I'm sorry? I'm aware of this, the discussion. Mr. McCaskill? I am aware of the discussion. Okay. Um, the reason that I bring this up is because although University Station and the subject of tonight's meeting, the Islington Redevelopment Project, are two totally separate projects, they are undeniably intertwined. And as much as both of these proposed projects have a common denominator of commercial development and multi-use development, but more critically because of the encompassing issue of affordable housing, that those discussions on Monday night at the Board of Selectmen meetings raised. Um, I was particularly disturbed by the dialogue um, between our elected Board of Selectmen, our town administrator, town employees, and of course, our special town council. Um, but it, the discussion, I was disturbed because it was in connection to and related to the topic of affordable housing, and that's why I'm standing before you now. Specifically, I was referring to the assortment of troubling back and forth comments at the Board of Selectmen meeting concerning Westwood stock of affordable housing as defined by MGL Chapter 40B. Um, I applaud Mr. Bailey, our special town council, um, who, who strove to elaborate on the concerns that were raised during those discussions. And, but, and I also appreciate he made a declaration and he said it's a complicated issue. The fact remains that I witnessed an abundance of non-answers with respect to where Westwood stands for affordable housing. Um, and I'd also like to mention for anyone else that didn't see that meeting, and it pertains to this meeting, public, our town special council publicly acknowledged affordability and condos don't go together. So we're gathered here tonight for a discussion for a special permit application that's seeking a waiver of an affordable housing provision that's in our zoning bylaws because from what I've read from the submission on the application to the planning board, the economics are unfavorable for the developer. I find that disingenuous and I find it insulting. So I am here because I think that it is incumbent upon each individual, each individual member of the board, our planning board, to make an independent, conscientious decision in respect of growth management regulations that are consistent with the goals of the town and to impose our zoning bylaws. In particular, section 9.5.14, which defines the affordability requirements. Moreover, I think a waiver is a deal breaker, one that should be non-negotiable, and it's shameful to even consider it. Thank you. Do we have another uh, question or comment? Okay, hearing none. Do you have something to speak? I just want to quickly address the affordability component. We put together an application. Uh, we asked for a lot of waivers, a lot of zoning changes, including the thing on the affordability. We happen to agree with the statement uh, that 
affordability in condo units or property for sale uh, may not necessarily go hand in hand. Uh, my client uh, fully understands that at the end of this project, he's going to be providing three, which is the number that is required, three affordable units, and we're looking for alternatives, uh, and we hope to be able to provide those uh, in a rental market. So just as we did with the uh, other property at 301, 323, uh, those are not 40B units, uh, they're done through local action uh, units, uh, and the units, uh, once approved, uh, do count towards the town's uh, affordable housing stock, so for your affordable number in terms of, of 40B and the 10% you know, that you need to maintain. But uh, your bylaw does require 15%, which for this project is, is three units. So we are looking for uh, an alternative in the area uh, in terms of uh, pre providing those as rental units. Thank you. So to clarify that, because maybe I was a little confused, you will be providing those units. Uh, Somewhere in town, but we don't know where. Yeah, it's my client's hope that it's going to be in the Islington Center area, and my client will be provided, will be taking three units, uh, going to the local action unit process, and having them declared as affordable units uh, in perpetuity, and the town is not being offered uh, money in lieu thereof. I should also just end by saying that there were a lot of great points raised tonight. Uh, we understand we have a lot of work. Uh, instead of answering half the questions tonight, our preference is at the next meeting, uh, which by which time we've actually been probably getting deeper into the uh, peer review process, uh, updating plans, uh, and then being able to present uh, responses to uh, hopefully all the questions and concerns that were raised this evening. Go ahead, feel free. for me is the MMO. 
So is the enamel just the L shape inside? So I would like to know, in proportion with the square footage, what is the exterior fenestrations for enamel? This portion here is 55 feet. That's the, the window section. And actually, just looking at this now, you may be able to incorporate the windows here also. So it would be an additional 25 to 30 feet. So I think we can incorporate that into it. Thank you. Uh, so it's pretty much the orientation is those demonstrations are being uh, are facing east and a little bit like southeast, uh, I believe, but primarily east, I believe. Um, is there a way that we can have some um, other ways to create a little bit more on the other side sorry, along the perimeter? There's also windows on the on the right side too, this one does the turn on the right side. Okay, so are, okay. So. Yeah. so that was one comment uh, for improvement. And probably the, <coughs> is the slide where the playground and other um, uh, card member Brian mentioned on the playground. Um, I see that the building uh, sitting close to it is kind of uh, projecting um, Quite a lot of shadow to the playground is pretty much where the. I'm not sure if I'm able to use this, but yeah. The Correct. So is pretty much. Is there a way how to move that corner of the building a little bit more to the left, a couple of feet, and to to have a, a wider space between the playground and that uh, um, corner of the building. I think we're planning on looking at one of the comments was the playground and possibly looking at a different location for it. So we will be studying that over the next couple of weeks. Uh, great, thank you. Um, and uh, what I see is improvement based on the previous uh, um, presentation. I see that there are uh, uh, open, um, like open spaces. Um, which really improves the, the lifestyle and very similar to what we've seen from the um, uh, outdoor seating. Uh, uh, this is a, a great improvement, uh, personally. Um, I hope to see a little bit uh, more uh, towards that corner where the two buildings meet. Um, it, personally, it looks to me a little bit too uh, narrow. Uh, and uh, the as probably Steve mentioned about connectivity, pedestrian connectivity, it will be great to probably use the same texture of the outdoor seating somewhere where the playground is, uh, rather than just having asphalt in there. Um, either to incorporate, to lessen up the space where the parking is, and probably to create that open area within the center. Thank you. Great job, everyone. All right, I'm going to make a last call for public comments tonight. Approach the mic, please. Uh, Joe, Joe Perpetier, 16 Dean Street. Maybe I missed something. Is the ICC under agreement? Is it still under the care, custody, and control of the town of Westwood? Currently or at the end of the... At the, at the end of right the now. Right now. Right now it's still our, it's still a Westwood property, correct? Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, one more final call to public commentary. All right, given that we're actually a little earlier than we dreamed, um, I'll, I'll ask the board if we have any further questions to be asking tonight that we could, you know, fit in with only if, if any of the public comments is teasing.
have been more thoughts. And there's one of the residents did ask, and, and I would like uh, to know, well, where is all the space that the town has now in, in the uh, community center there? Where, where is that now going to be replaced in addition to the MMO? stated that they would continue to discuss and negotiate a disposition agreement. They are in the process of doing that now. Part of the um, negotiation of the disposition agreement requires a settlement of where buildings go, what land remains in town ownership, what land goes to the private developer. So the process has to go hand in hand. The selectmen will continue to negotiate as the planning board defines the process better. So they're both ongoing. Um, the land disposition agreement would be signed and put in the planning board's hands before the planning board would be asked to vote. Um, if there is no land disposition agreement, then the planning board would not complete the special permit or would deny the special permit. The land disposition agreement is a necessity before a proposal could be taken to town meeting. So both processes are going on at the same time. Thanks, Laura. So I, I, this is. Um, Part of this that my memory is foggy from the, uh, from the process we went through with the task force, but is the concept now that the MMO would be a, uh, would be leasing space from we would be leasing space from you effectively for their operation there, and the town would be leasing space or would be owning would, would be owning space within the addition to the library to house the services the town services etc. That's correct. The MMO will become a tenant uh, of Petruzio Properties and no longer have a relationship uh, with the town. Uh, my client has met with, with the MMO. Uh, my understanding is that, uh, unlike every other tenant, the MMO, as they have been doing uh, with the town, uh, is willing to commit to one year. So we're building out a, a property uh, for, is that correct, for one year? For, for one year. Uh, now my understanding is that's how they've been historically doing it uh, with the town. Uh, just so we're clear, uh, across the street, the original proposals uh, was that my client was giving zero dollars to the town and was going to relocate uh, the library uh, and do the build up uh, due to the fact that um, for, a number, for a number of reasons uh, in terms of the economics of the project, including uh, that our initial understanding was that my client, because he was doing so much work uh, on the school street side of the property, 
uh, would be able to undertake the project without triggering uh, prevailing wage. Uh, we have now been told by special town council uh, that that's not the case. Well, my client, even the parking lot, which my client is replicating uh, for the town, uh, it's our understanding that that work uh, will be done uh, by my client, but at prevailing wage. So in lieu of that, uh, in the package that's before you, uh, the uh, relocation and the build out of that space. We provided the area for the space, but in lieu of that, my client is offering the, uh, the town uh, dollars. The actual disposition, as, it, as the buildings move, the lot lines will move, uh, and that will, therefore, we don't know where the exact lot, I mean, we have shown lot lines on all the plans. Um, the plans in front that we submitted with the application uh, showed the location of the Wentworth Hall slash library, which would have a new, anticipated to have a new basement area of about 2,000 square feet. Subsequently, uh, we were requested to redesign that, which is what you're seeing tonight probably for the first time, uh, for the potential for a, that the land area for a potential 4,000 square foot, um, if you will, addition to that, uh, that would be replacing the community space uh, that the town um, is giving up out of the out of the ICC, uh, and as I had indicated, we believe between the uh, 1.75 million dollars uh, that the applicant has proposed, uh, plus the additional uh, revenues that would be generated, plus the savings that the town will have uh, in not having to spend the 1.2 million plus trying to bring the current ICC uh, up to at least code, but still ending up with a, a church space as opposed to usable space, uh, that the project makes economic sense uh, from the town perspective as well. So the addition to the west of the library, as shown in this plan, would not be a day one build up or fit up, or would not be built as day one. That, that's a future addition to be built by the town, as I don't understand. Yeah, the town to will make the decision when they, when they want to build that up. Got it. Sure, I get it. So I'm sure the room sort of gets to specify that. Anyone else? So what does that mean as far as community space? Is that has a decision been made that the town will build that community space? I think I think it would be unfortunate to lose uh, that that community space. Even so, is it? So who is going to make that decision that that building will be built and who's going to pay for it? Those are questions that will be answered as we negotiate the land disposition agreement. The intention is for the community space to be replicated as called out in the RFP. The Board of Selectmen are the ones who have to decide if there's sufficient parking to replace the municipal parking that they have now and if there's sufficient community space to replace the community space they have now. The intention here is to put an addition on the rear of Wentworth Hall that would accommodate that community space and to put a, a community room on the lower level of the new Wentworth Hall location that would also replicate that community space. The idea is that the developer would give funds to the town and the town would design and use those funds to design and construct the addition as well as to move Wentworth Hall. So what's being negotiated of how much those funds are and whether they're sufficient to develop a community space. I just have a, uh, with regards to the, the wetland, have you, have you approached the, uh, the Conservation Commission as far as getting, uh, it looks like you're approaching the, uh, the impermeable surface on that exit onto School Street. So I'm just wondering where, at what point will you discuss that with the Conservation Commission so that we know if it's a go, no go there. My card again. Um, we have filed a notice. We have filed a notice of intent with the conservation commission. It's 
Um, my understanding is it's at bay right now. We need to have the town. As an applicant, it would be both the town and the, the developer. Um, so it is a document you want to read from the town. It's not going to be proceed for it. But we have filed the document. And it's not advertised yet because we need to get that one document signed. Thank you. All right, um, Brian, sorry if I just add on that. We recommended that the application move further along in the planning board process before filing the complete application and scheduling the hearing with the Conservation Commission so that um, you can weigh in on the building locations. But when it comes to the Conservation Commission, it's uh, more defined. Right. And then just my last question has to do with the, I didn't see a school impact study, so um, did I miss it or is there intent to do that? There was a um, fiscal impact report that was submitted okay, so, uh, with your application. Um, you have also hired your own um, fiscal um, consultant, RKG. Craig Seymour is here this evening hearing the presentation, and then he will report back to you. Um, so you will be reviewing that at your upcoming meetings more. And that is important to help you determine the number of residential units. And then just one more thing is just to, to reiterate the to see updates to the um, to the rendering so that we can see that um, that they match the, the architectural plans. I think that will help me when I review the plans. Thank you. I just uh, thought of another question. So what right now is planned for the Blue Heart Tavern? Is that to be um, like an on office space, let's say apartment or something? And would that be owned by so the Blue Hot Tavern will be owned by us, and we will have office space on the first floor with a residential unit above. So, and I know this is all subject to more discussion, but it, so am I correct looking at it now to see that uh, the town at the end of this would have the library building and $1.75 million and the opportunity to build something behind the library. And the rest of it is all not town anymore. 30 spaces of municipal parking. I think you're gonna get, we're going to get ourselves in trouble if we offer a 
3D interactive computer model that anyone who works is going to want to move around in, in, within. Um, I would still prefer to see a physical model that could be at a relatively you know, conservative scale. And we can just, I, I don't remember if the biological states scale, size, materiality, etc. Um, but maybe we can discuss what that might be. Uh, I'm thinking also a computer model would be less expensive and easier to create, I'm assuming. And it would also be easier to share with people because not everybody can come to the meeting and look at the model. If it turns out that model is in, inadequate, could we then go back to requesting something else on it? Because I think there's kind of a trade-off. Like there is obviously it would be nice to physically see it in front of us and all, but if it's a computer model that can people can look at it for assuming that it's you know it's usable. I mean that's kind of the thing, assuming that it's it's actually accessible and usable, more people would be able to view that from home if they're leisure and uh, Right, but I think we gotta make a decision on this tonight so they can get set up and be ready. So I think we gotta come to a decision here on which do we want. I'd, I'd be okay with a computer model. Should we just do a quick vote on how they want to find it? Well, actually, well, well, physical model? I haven't, uh, I haven't done a real model in 20 years. Uh, I got a couple of great guys in chat that it's not an uncommon thing I mean, still today, so I mean, I'm happy to put it to a vote of the board if we think a physical model is necessary. But I think we're going to do it. But we should decide tonight. Right. Brian, what's your opinion? Uh, I, I would just think that a physical model might be easier to see the scales across the screen and stuff versus looking at a two-dimensional screen and trying to, to gauge, especially when you're, when you're looking at CVS compared to the, uh, the, the condos where, the, where they drop off. The different, so. Yeah, I so I think it sounds like without taking a vote, we're still we're in agreement with the physical. We'd like to see a physical model. I mean, as I was saying before, I think it says it should show enough context to understand the neighborhood. Um, but maybe, we'll, maybe we'll look to you, ask you to, pro to propose a, a scale and size so that something you feel is reasonable. But I don't want to make this arduous. But uh, I, mean, I, I don't think we can see you know, shingles on walls, but we want to see general massing and like relationships with streets and contours and the actual buildings. Yeah. yeah, maybe, actually, no, I mean, maybe if you want to plan for next meeting, if it could be a print of the rented site plan, of the context we plan to do at the, at the same scale, we could say, yes, let's do this scale. Yeah, that's it. Not great. Yeah. All right, if there are no other uh, board comments, um, so I would like to hear a motion to continue this hearing to Tuesday, February 13th at 7 p.m. at the Sheehan School. Actually, sorry, 7.30 p.m. at the Sheehan School. And, um, they are not open for the meeting until 7.30. All right, well, 7.30 p.m. at the Sheehan School. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. So just, just, just to reiterate, this, uh, this public hearing has been continued to Tuesday, February 13th at 7.30 p.m. at the Sheehan School. Uh, please keep on the website for further information.